Welcome to another edition of Insta Chat with the Journalist. I'm Andile, aka the Journalist, and today my guest is Pasta the DJ. You know, he needs no introduction in the game. This guy is is he's a radio veteran, you know. He's got like the biggest show on radio. Biggest actually he's got the biggest morning show, breakfast show on radio. Uh, you know, he's on Umklobo NNA, which is like the second biggest radio station in the country. So, you know, he's got the numbers, he's got the numbers. He's more than just a club DJ. He's also a presenter, you know, which is a dope skill to have because, you know, if if, if you diversify your portfolio like that, you know, you, you never run out of work, you know. So, yeah, shout out to Pastor the DJ. He'll be joining us shortly and we'll be just, you know, chatting to him about his career, you know, what inspired him to be the game. And, you know, hopefully he'll give us some tips on, you know, how to get numbers like him. I want to know, you know, how to get numbers like Pastor the DJ. How do you become that guy who's got the ratings? How do you become that guy that's in demand? How do you become that guy that, like, you know, everybody wants to work with, you know? And Pastor the DJ is that guy. He's got the numbers. He's in the space. And, yeah, man, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm adding him now. And we'll be him about his career. And hopefully, you know, we'll walk away from this interview learning something. Pastor the DJ, welcome. Away, 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 away. You know, I, I, I know you are probably used to doing the interviews now. You know, the roles are reversed. Now I'm interviewing you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the other end. You're on the other end. You know, first of all, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you know, for, for, for chatting to us today. The whole point of this is that, you know, we're trying to learn and, you know, understand your journey a bit better. And, you know, yeah, yeah just understand your, your story, you know, because I think that, you know, you've got an amazing story and, you know, uh, you have something that a lot of people aspire to, which is the numbers. You've got the numbers, you've got the ratings, you know. <laughs> but before we get to that, Pastor the DJ, for those that don't know, I, are, you, are you really a pastor? How did you get that name? Uh, Yo, not even close, eh? <laughs> not even close to being a pastor. But um, look, it's a nickname I got uh, a technical when I arrived in Ansigen for the first year, Erez. To cut a long story short, mm. uh, the guy who was Guiru Messen next to now uh, is from Queenstown. Now in Queenstown, there's a certain family member Engu Pastor Noze, who happens to be a real pastor. He still is that pastor. Mm -hmm. And uh, that guy, since mm -hmm. Pastor Noze, a family friend, he started calling me Pastor Noze because my surname is Noze anyway. So he put the two together and mm -hmm. ended up calling me Pastor Noze. And that's how it caught up with everyone. We're going to go to the NBZ, Pastor Noze, Pastor Noze. And yeah, the name stuck. Mm, wow. Look, it's, it's, it's a very catchy name, you know. and it also speaks to what you do because in a way you are a pastor because you preach on radio every day. You know, it's just yeah. that it might not be religious, but you know, you do preach yeah. on radio every day. How did you, you know, what inspired you to become a DJ slash presenter? I love music before I love radio. Uh, my mm. older brother, you know, in the early years, the house music, uh, around about 1988, 1989, there was a lot of music from the UK. There was a lot of music from Enansiga Air, Chicago, in the United mm. States. When house music was coming up, where it was changing into what it is and what we know house as right now. My brother used to mm. collect songs or cassettes as. He used to collect music from Wesinyinda Ungazazi and even on the radio at times. And uh, mm. my love for music, more especially dance music, it grew at the time. And uh, mm -hmm. I so wanted to be in an environment where you have access to all the music in the world. And the mm -hmm. only place that I saw by Injalo was in radio. Radio stations mm -hmm. have got music libraries. Well, they used to back in the day. Now everything is digitalized. So mm -hmm. I wanted to be on radio. I wanted to work for a radio station just to have the access to the music. I did not even think about being the guy in the forefront, the guy uh, leading a uh, e radio show like I'm doing right now. So it was my love for music that came first and everything else started happening afterwards. Mm, mm. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, you just, you followed your passion. You just wanted to be in the music yeah. space. 
and uh, you know especially back then as a black person it it wasn't necessarily a popular career move so i want to know you know for you even now a lot of young guys when they want to start getting into the media space they get a lot of like challenges especially from their families and friends and you know yeah. you have to kind of like prove yourself how did you do it you know with your family and friends how did you con- con- convince them like that you know what you don't want to be a, a nurse or a doctor or a lawyer you want to get into radio or media how was that like for you i think my mother my late mother had a very huge influence in in me choosing this career path later on in life i mean you know when we grew up my mom loved mamele radio uh, we used to listen to uh radio 5 at the time which now is 5 fm and this was sometime in the late mm. 80s uh mm. 5 fm which was radio 5 we used to listen to e radio pop on the am we used to listen to capital radio and all those mm. stations my mother would be listening to the radio in the car ending even no matter slele so we've got the radio playing no bit the lelezans so when uh, i decided and when my love for music led me in the direction 80 i'd love to work for a radio station she supported me she tried to find ways as to she me to have me go for a tour uh, mm-hmm. sit in with other broadcasters you know just to sit there and see how they do things so mm-hmm. she supported me. and even when an opportunity came up i remember uh, i took a gap year sometime well, immediately after my matric year i took a gap mm-hmm. a gap year Uh, still to decide on what i wanted to do and my mother was the one person that showed me an article ai village city press where they were starting e radio training at mm-hmm. um, at uh, well it was not necessarily virt university but it was an outside project but supported by the university so my mom saw that in the paper she called me and said listen you need to come up to janesburg uh, mm-hmm. there's a course that they're offering with radio and what not and mm-hmm. without even a break because been clearly look she now wasn't doing anything i took mm-hmm. uh, the next train out and i got in registered mm-hmm. uh, i also did another tv presenting course as well where it managed mm-hmm. to raise funds for me to pay for the radio course so i wow. did that way and my mom has always been behind me all the way hence i'm saying she played a huge role in in, in indirect i'm sure she wasn't even her way that why why create a this radio person out of me so because of the environment at home we were always listening to radio and when opportunities for training in radio came up she's the one who said listen go for this one we have also mm. <laughs> the trades match akaya my parents never had a problem with that mm. wow you know uh, you know you are very fortunate to have you know that support base you know mm. uh, that molded you to follow your dreams Now yeah. you know right now the state of radio is quite controversial you know there's a lot of um talk around you know talent versus social media following versus influencer <laughs> I, I you as a radio guy that actually went to school you know for that like uh, what, what, what what's your opinion on influencer um uh, or the presenters being given slots look maybe i mean this has been going on for a long time uh probably in the background but it's always been an issue people in radio that they've always been talking about uh mm. and this thing did not start now this thing started mm. i'd say about 8 to 10 years ago mm. and the problem started was when radio started hiring people from corporate uh mm. let me explain that and i'm not mm. going to mention name okay for example a certain somebody working for let's say for a certain network a cellular network company this person has done well in marketing that station they've done well in team in leading those teams at the corporate environment now when these people started being posted for jobs within a radio industry and these people yes they 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 did good and they delivered was a platforms that they were working at but now they was they started being recruited to come and bring those changes into radio that corporate mindset into a radio little did they know that those guys knew nothing about the radio because now here they are as e owners of radio stations turning the radio stations into just like any other business yeah. and when those guys 
came into his space and radio in leadership roles. Obviously, as a marketer, you think influencers, you think the in thing, you think this and that. What is the youth or who is the youth looking up to? And the problem started there. When they started mixing what they were doing, quasi corporate uh, marketing departments, uh, mm -hmm. and they started trying to bring what worked in that certain environment into e radio. E radio mm -hmm. is a specialist uh, career. E radio, mm -hmm. it's either you're born with it or you're not. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't be a radio announcer out of the blue. People who've made it on radio will tell you that I've, I've, I've sharpened my skills. I've honed my craft for so many years, since I was a little boy, since I was at primary school. Now, then these people brought in this mindset, Yoba, for business, if we bring in a certain popular somebody whose face is on TV or has a huge follow-up, followership on social media, let's use this person to draw uh, in numbers. It doesn't work like that. People who listen to radio are very finicky. They know exactly what they want when it comes to what the broadcaster delivers. Now, what these people lack was a skill for a radio. Yes, they had the numbers on social media, but trust you me, even the same people that follow them on social media can't stand on radio because they know that they just found wanting even in the first place. So I think, well, the, in my that's how this whole thing got messed up. And I mean, yeah, let me just leave it there. Let me just leave it there. Before I start mentioning names and making examples, let me just leave it there. Okay. All right. No, thank you. Thank you so much for that answer. You know, I understand what you're saying. And, you know, which brings to my next question. You still have, you still bring like, you know, millions of follow of, of, of listeners rather to your, to yeah. your show. What's your secret? Yeah, you know, when we came on to the show 11 years ago, Bengo, April, April 2010, when we started with the show, it was myself and Patko. Uh, the show had about 740,000 listeners when we took over. Now, Patko is somebody that I've never met personally. I've always seen him on TV. Uh, he used to be on a station uh, in the area where I come from, a King William Stown show, they used to have a CKIFM during mm -hmm. the times of Inan Siga e, e, e TBV states. So Patko used to work there. I grew up listening to Patko. Uh, I went for radio training. I started doing radio for 11 years with the True FM. Patko was not in the industry at the time. But the minute I uh, moved to Mkhobo Enene, and I was told I'd be producing. They never told me who I was going to producing the show for. And I only found out two days before we started the show that actually I was going to be producing for Padco. And that's how we met for the first time. So the programs manager at the, at the time says, listen, guys, you'll be doing the breakfast show. You can go and have a discussion among yourselves and come back within a day because you're starting on the show in three days' time. And when we sat down and we started understanding and learning more about each other, now Ikhrutman to be out. When we found each other, Tina, off A, and we agreed on a certain uh, number of uh, e-ideas that we're going to try out on the show. And we mm -hmm. said, let's just be ourselves. Let's not mm -hmm. try and mimic whoever was doing the show before that or so many years before that. Let's mm -hmm. just be Pasta and Patko. Just be yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think even up until today, with Patko now, he's left the show <laughs> What brings in the numbers is that we're just ourselves. We're just unique. It's a group of three guys. We're just in a four-cornered room, and we just speak our minds. We're just having fun. But the most important thing is that we understand e-theory and the e, e basics of radio and the ethics of radio. So those control us. You know? As much as Abanyabandu may see our show as e chaos, believe you me, According to I organize chaos. We walk in with the script every day. During Itlasha, the song is playing in the background. We're not just sitting there and biting our fingernails. We're discussing what is on the screen. Different angles to different stories, as Nabi. And when we read the newspaper, almost everybody has a certain angle uh, that they understand what that story is about. So we try and bring those about. But in, in the process, uh, we speak for different people. We represent different 
uh, viewpoints. And all those are welcome. And in the end, people just love certain elements. People love certain characters uh, within the three of us. And the secret to success, originality, and us just being ourselves. Wow. Thank you so much for that. And now, obviously, now you have the numbers. Now you are popular, right? People, you know, recognize your voice on radio. People know you on the streets. But also, your first love is music. You know, you're a DJ. And now, yeah. you know, you also play music at clubs, right? So your show, I, you know, I can imagine the preparation is hectic. And also now, now you are booked to go play at clubs, festivals, and so forth. How do you balance that? moving or you know how do you move from now being on a presenter to now being a, a club dj or a, or a festival dj well actually i was a dj before i was on radio before i i, I actually finished my matric i was already dj uh, we started with the cassettes yeah. at the time they were moved from the cassettes to playing ecds using a dvd player uh, playing CDs because we couldn't afford to to buy as as pictures of a pioneer. So as time went on, people saw us what we could do. What I was a I was a part of a, of a three DJ outfit. Such as Visa, a mega mixing crew, three guys wow. uh, using DVD players to mix. And we are as it delay your DVD player. You press to play. You wait for a couple of seconds before the song comes on. Now there's no pitch. There's nothing. So we started doing. <laughs> Uh, I did that long before I identified in Dogba. I want to do radio now. I want to go to school and study and learn about radio more. So I was a DJ before that. Uh, and even when I joined in Club uh, I, uh I had 11 years experience working for the SABC, but with the CKIFM. So when I moved to Mkobo, a lot of people did not know that uh, I was a DJ. And uh, the station did not have mixed DJs at the time. I mean, I went to the, they gave me the weekend slot while I was producing the breakfast show at the, during the week. And on weekends, they said, listen, they're giving me a party time. And I said, I can't do party time without the decks. They said, okay, I'm yours, Kangela, and tell us how much they are. We'll pay for those and you can start, they can start uh, in the procurement processes. We'll connect those in the studio for you. So mm. uh, I went around, looked for a good price, yes, CDJ, 350s, uh, and the mixer. Within the next week, they connected those this studio, in Enanskini studio, they hooked those up. So I started playing. I started playing on the show, and this was something new on the station because no one had been doing this. Yes, other stations had been doing it, about 20, mm. 2010. And my, yes. followership, my following started growing for the show at the time, but then... My, my other problem was that gigs started coming in because I was working Friday night and Saturday night. But now because of what I was doing on the radio, Friday night and Saturday night, people yeah. wanted to put me outside the station. I'm like, guys, uh, I told the station manager because they were paying much better than what I was getting uh, over. <laughs> so I put two and two together. I'm like, no, man. At least I created it demand for me to go and play at venues. Mm -hmm. So I went to the station manager about a year later and I said, listen, sir, uh, the reason why I moved to Mkabo Enene was to get that national reach, was to get my name out there. And with the mm -hmm. response of inquiries about gigs that I'm getting, mm -hmm. I think it's only fair that I'm honest to you that I won't be able to honor each and every single Friday and Saturday. Can you please replace me with someone else? And he said, fine, I love your honesty. The following week, I was out and about on the streets, clubs, mm -hmm. <laughs> parties, DJs. So it, it sort of like helped me, radio helped me to launch myself nationally on a platform, FNNM Trouble with Nana FM. It's much easier with the SABC because they've got studios all over the country. If mm -hmm. you've got a gig in Johannesburg, you know that you'll gig in the evening. The next day, mm -hmm. you've already booked the studio at Auckland Park. If you're playing mm -hmm. in Cape Town, you know that the next morning, you've already booked a studio in Seapoint. So it makes things much easier for us. Whether it's Amtata, we've got studios, studios in Amtata, whether it's mm -hmm. Bloemfontein, Victoria, so you juggle that with the weekends, Zako, but there's also family at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we do, I do the breakfast show. I've got almost half of the day to myself. Uh, then I have to go fetch my kids from work. Also manage to do some other business on the phone because I also have um, a recording company as well where we record in Ansiga e Radio wow. at 
so I'm, I'm doing that as well. Uh, I've got a mini studio at home, recording studio where I make music. So I do have time to myself. But when it comes to the weekend, Friday, Saturday, there are times when I leave at about 11 o'clock and only come back 11 o'clock in the morning on a Friday and come mm. back about 10 on a Sunday night. And my wife understands that this mm. is what puts food on the table. It's a different case altogether right now because with the lockdown and everything else, yeah. I shut up. I'm so fun. <laughs> yeah. but I, I manage. I manage to, 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 to juggle everything. And it works out fine. Wow. You know, um, one of the things that I like that you, that you mentioned is that, you know, you used to play with MS, uh, DVD players, you know, because you couldn't yeah. afford CDJs. And yeah. that means, obviously, you understand the art of beat matching and mixing and all that. And, uh, mm. you know, there's always a debate that comes every now and then from old school DJs to new school DJs because new school DJs with the, with the new fancy CDJs they just press yeah. sync. They don't beat match, you know? And if they have yeah. to play with older stuff, you know what I mean? Then the songs don't yeah. mix so nice. So now the question that I'm asking you is, is it still important to know the art of beat matching and all that knowing pitch control considering the technology has made it easier for more, a modern DJ to just press a button and just select tracks. You know what I mean? What is yeah. your opinion on that? It took me some time to move from a CD to a USB. Let me start there. I think I only started using USBs only about two years ago because yeah. I'm old school like that. I preferred using a CD. You know, when you push it in there, there's a different feeling to that. Even with the guys that play vinyl, I also uh, can play vinyl as well because when I start, when I taught myself how to play, I had a turntable on the left and I had a pitch controlled Nancy Gun CD player on the right. That's how I taught myself because I, I, I had uh, an SL1200 I borrowed from a friend and mm. borrowed another in Antigua CDJ100 uh, at the time. So I put mm. the two uh, together. It, it, and, and this is why it took me so long to move from Inansiga from U7 size CD and the old technology. Mm. I, I hate using a virtual DJ. I'll be honest with you. Um, mm. Even beat matching now, these guys can sync. Look, at the end of the day, we have to move with the times. It doesn't matter how old school you are. At the end of the day, technology is making things simpler for us. But mm. in, in using a technology to DJ, I think the only difference is how you deliver your product way. You can, mm. you can have nothing button, you can mix using a virtual DJ, but it's how it comes out, how you bring the song in, how you play around with the faders and your effects and how beautifully it sounds to the person who's listening. That's what sets you apart. Otherwise, everyone can be a DJ, right? But mm. it's how you bring your songs in and how you fade your songs out. It's the skill behind the mixing now that comes to the fore. And that's mm. one thing that uh, people took years to polish because OTJ is not only about beat, about beat matching. It's, mm. it's more than, more than mm. that. There's timing where you put your song in, uh, knowing your music, where the breaks are, all of that. So it's not only about beat, ma beat matching. Everyone can be a DJ because the technology gives you that. But how you set yourself apart is these nitty gritties that you have to focus on. The smaller mm. thing. Yeah, no. Well put, well put. I like asking that question because I know it. You know. <laughs> no, I'm not an enemy of technology. Uh, more especially when it comes to our field of work, uh, I'm not an enemy. You learn every day. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, my second last question is now the music, you know. Um, you know, you, you put out music with uh, Ish, Ish and, uh, and Vitoto. Uh, yeah. You know, how, how's that journey going, you know, putting out music out there and, you know, just now blessing people with your sound instead of just playing, you know, other people's music. Yeah. Well, at, last year was a very good year for me, more especially when it comes to uh, my music production as well as putting music out there. I put out four singles last year. Uh, there's one I did with Unsige Mazwai, Singo Banitina. Uh, there's another one I did with the MXO a Remix, Yango Mayake, At the End of the Road. And then I got signed to E-Total Music, 
where Ubi Toto as well as U Ishmael uh, are signed to. Um, and of course, they signed me onto their label because they had heard the stuff that I'd, be, that I'd been putting out for some time. And uh, because the uh, record label owner is also a friend of mine and he worked at Motherland. So uh, he said, look, I've been listening, I've been watching your hustle. Uh, I'm working with Vitoto, he's one of my artists, and we'd love to have you on board. And I said, fine, let's do this. So we started working together and things started changing because, you know, when you work on your own, when you are an independent, and I mean as an independent, because when you look at e e technology and what um, the internet has given us, I mean, mm -hmm. you can create your beats at home, you can market your own music, distribute your own music. I tried doing that for about two, three years. There was just that one thing that was lacking. And when I signed to Total Music, with all the contacts and the experience that they had, things started turning around for me. And that's when start, people started, men started paying attention because I started uh, featuring big names now, featuring alongside big other producers. So mm -hmm. it's changed because now I have a different team working with me and working around me. And I've let them guide my career rather than I'd be able to do all of these things by myself. So that's where the change is. 2020 was a good year for me. Uh, joining Total Music, it's opened a lot of doors for me. Mm. Well, and there's you know, come. yeah, yeah. You know, um, I have to like, you know, ask in terms of, obviously, you know, you, you have diversified your portfolio very well in the industry. Um, you know, obviously, a lot of uh, people in the in the media industry, especially, are, are heavily affected by COVID. Uh, yeah. But you know, you know, you know, you on the business side, you know, you know how to uh, move around the business side and also being the face. So, looking at twenty twenty one, it's obviously going to be another tough year for for artists for for the entertainment industry. What, how, what, how would you advise, you know, especially the up and coming people to navigate the space moving forward into 2021 to survive? You know, with, with, the, with the other guys, and I'm talking DJs and producers, I, and I'm talking to them rather, uh, I consider myself very lucky. The fact that I've got a Monday to Friday job. Imagine if I only had the DJing career or the music thing. Uh, only starting out, and it only started picking up last year. Uh, imagine the other guys who only rely on DJ, who only rely on being uh, resident DJs at clubs, and we know what the situation is. I consider myself very lucky, and mm -hmm. I think this should be um, a lesson for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Your hustle, diversify your hustle, uh, as you said. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily only have to be a DJ. There's so many other things that that one can do. I'm sure there's, b besides you being a DJ, uh, you'd love to go to school and continue and finish, finish, finish your studies. And this is an opportunity for you to look into yourself and ask yourself, what else can I do besides this music thing? What other mm -hmm. opportunities are there? I mean, I'm happy seeing DJs, you know, uh, taking advantage of this lockdown situation. I'm seeing guys I know as DJs and music producers, they're now running their own businesses where they're fogging places, uh, where they, they're trying by all means to, to, to create a space and be available in the now problem. I mean, there's a friend of mine in East London. I mean, he quit his job about three years ago to focus on his music. He's a DJ, but now all of a sudden, everything, yava. And what this guy is doing now, he's got this, he's got a business, Yo Fogisha, where places were contaminated by COVID-19. And this guy's posting pictures on a daily basis. He's doing three, four places every single day, even working weekend. And when I chat to him, he says, I'm making more money doing this because I took advantage of the situation. And the equipment that didn't cost him much, but he saw a gap and he thought, the clubs is a value this music thing now, yo, it won't be moving very as fast as I'd love to because no music festivals anymore. What can I do? So he decided to throw all the money that he had in his savings to buy the equipment 
for ukina in dao and decontaminate is in the st and that's what that's a source of income right now whether mm-hmm. he'll go back to pj he says he's not sure because he's now a fully fledged mm-hmm. businessman so mm-hmm. i'm trying to say gapanda go school there are also other opportunities out there we just need to open our eyes zinenzi zindes koy around us something that gapanda go mtulo that you always saw as a hobby perhaps it's high time that you turn that into a career mm Okay um I know I said there was a second last question but uh, Mario the artist has has a question he says yeah. um, a quick question on the independent artist sector is it really necessary for them to sign to a label like you said that you can push out your own content content on your own so basically he wants to know is it necessary oh. to sign as an independent artist Look I learned the hard way I learned the hard way I thought I could do it and I pushed myself for three years and i think to explain it better to mario for him to understand one of the challenges i had having my music playlisted on stations i worked for the bigger i worked for the second largest radio station in the country but when you're sending your music out to stations you don't know these compilers you've never met them you've never even had relationships with these guys but what i learned with total music and other record labels was that they've got a database of these people So when the music comes out they know exactly which email addresses are most important which shows are most important in those radio stations those are things that I did not know as an individual but now when I partnered with a label uh, so many things started becoming clearer to me uh, another challenge uh, look we cannot run away from the fact that ikoni do pay you all in the industry there are some people pay a band do for their music to be playlisted and i'm not saying i'm doing this but then again at the end of the day he honestly i eco in the industry but when you have friends who got relationships with these people at stations it makes things much easier for you because now you don't have to pick up a phone if i say hey i'd like an interview with kwala kwala but i don't know anyone but my label boss knows somebody who knows somebody at the station so so many doors started opening for me because of i uh, aligned myself but you don't have to sign a deal footy as a valela 100% you can always bring your own terms now but they bring their own terms and you meet each other halfway aksafa nadala some of the other things you really don't have to uh, get a special designer i'm talking about but we'll, we'll have a graphic designer for you we'll do this and this packaging for you it distribution this and that we'll register your music for you at samro at a fee when your money comes out then they start deducting as amounts that you did not even know but you were liable to pay for those amounts and when mm-hmm. they exaggerate those amounts they exaggerate those amounts and you end up ushega with nothing you know mm-hmm. so in this kind of situation you need to to learn as much as you can learn as much you can as you can read as much as you can about the industry so that when you sign these contracts organye when you come to a deal a deal you know and say no but this deal doesn't work more than or any better than this kind of deal because when they deal with somebody who knows their story uh, there not too many chances so but they might take you for a ride but going at it alone I learned the hard way it doesn't work and even the other flip side of this another example big artists like abonat big artists like ozahara big artists like undando these guys were at at the peak at some point in their careers but then um as time went on as by abona le machine ngu ye yahamba then they started thinking and believing that i can actually do this without all these other guys around me and they left those le- what happened to their careers mm. so we, we, i want to i mean and i use those examples as something that says look if we are not quite it will only happen once <laughs> if we are not it will only happen once but you learn from that so yeah. uh, doing things on your own i'd say do that just as a A, a means to collect the information to 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 create e partnerships because music is about that nowadays create partnership i never paid a single cent to mtanda zokaja uh, for renansiga e collab yam nai i didn't pay a single cent to ishman for a collab yam nai i didn't pay a single cent to unsig 
It's all about reaching and understanding. Listen, I created a beat. I'll give you 50% for your contribution and I get my 50%. We'll distribute this also and also and also. Anyone else who can assist us and joins us will we'll take a, a piece from our, from our cakes and give mm. that person a, their small portion. You know? So mm. it's all about relationships. It's all about relationships. Create relationships, but make sure that you've got your paperwork in order. Always have a lawyer handy. When you get a contract or when you want to draft a contract, make sure that we listen and we lawyer Yako so that you get advice. But it's quite sad that there's not too many entertainment lawyers in this country, but there's always somebody oh, and there's always the internet. Google, find out about these things, read about these things, what a standard contract for an artist is. Etiban mm -hmm. contract, distribution, marketing, and this know the difference between all these things. So mm -hmm. it goes back to you. Teach yourself now, we feed your brain, read a lot about how the music industry works. The business side of music is totally different to you creating music. And because the business side, and a lot of people mix because they ignore the basics of the business side. Wow, I know. Well said, well said. Yo, a lot of questions are coming in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey guys, we, we can't make it too long. We can't make it too long. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, guys. Um, hey, sorry, man. We can't take these questions. There's a lot. There's a lot of questions, you know. Um, yeah. I want to know, you know, lastly, like for 2021, um, what is your vision for the year? I think let, let's just leave it at that. Like, what's your vision for the year? <clears throat> uh, yo. Putting out more music. That's the first one. Uh, secondly, I'd love to grow uh, as, uh, as an influencer. Because now there's a lot of money. There's a lot of money to make besides radio. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I need to package my brand in a way that as e, 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 e brands will find attractive. I want to see myself promoting a certain brand, a global brand, not just a South African brand. I want to see myself being associated with a certain, how can I put it? You know, there are people like, when you look like, get, uh, what I'm trying to say is people like Kubona, where you get to a point where you don't own, you, you no longer endorse e-products, but you mm -hmm. have a product that has your name attached to it. That's mm -hmm. the highest level. That's the highest mm. level. So that's where I'm, uh, I'm, I'm focusing uh, this year, growing my brand towards that direction. And of course, it's how you carry yourself that attracts these mm. kind of fortunes to come your way. Mm. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, good luck with that. It's very possible. And I know you're a brand ambassador for Telcom, right? So, you know, you're already, yeah. you know, yeah. you're already there. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> okay pastor the dj thank you so much for for your time i've learned so much people that watch this have are also you know they've also learned so much for those that just joined us um this interview will be available on my timeline so please check it out thank you Sia Bonga. and uh, you know when you drop music please let me know so that we can just check about more about the music next yeah time. no definitely i will I, de I definitely will. We're dropping something uh, next month. In fact, I might be dropping an EP before May, but uh, mm -hmm. we're just finalizing a few things. A couple of surprises on that project, but uh, you'll just have to wait and see. Okay. I uh, know. Thank you. And for everybody that's watching, thank you so much. Shop, shop. Until next time. Sure, man. Thank you.